If you are studying data science, first of all, well done. You've chosen one of the most lucrative and in-demand jobs probably in tech nowadays. But here's the truth. The majority of students spend months, if not years, spinning their wheels on the wrong things. After working in this industry for over four years, I've seen exactly what separates the students who actually land their first job and those who just can't get past their basic tutorials. So in this video, I want to break down the five key mistakes that data science beginners make every single year. And hopefully you can avoid all of them. Let's get into it. Maths is by far in a way the most important skill. Yet I feel like people really overlook it. Most people and even practitioners in the field will say that you don't need to know the underlying maths because all the packages and libraries in like Python kind of remove the need for us to re-understand really how the maths behind data science and machine learning really works. There is some truth to this because you're very unlikely need to carry out back propagation by hand or code up a decision tree algorithm completely from scratch or even you know, design a whole A-B experiment completely from first principles. These things, like I said, rarely happen in the, in the industry and I can say that with first-hand experience. So I do understand why it's easy to take all of this for granted and not really invest much time in learning the underlying maths. However, you'd be making a very, very big mistake if you didn't. Put it this way, let's imagine you're building a PyTorch model, right? and you build your class, you're running through some images, let's say it's a CNN, for example. Now, let's say there's something wrong with your CNN and you find maybe it's overfitting, it's underfitting, or you've noticed a layer has some issues with it, right? Now, how do you debug that? The only way you can de debug that neural network or that PyTorch model is by understanding exactly what it's doing under the hood. You need to like print out all the weights, uh, the predictions at each kind of layer or, you know, however you want to approach debugging this neural network. But you, you can only really debug it if you understand how it works under the hood and exactly how the maths operates. That is what's going to really help you in that scenario. And these scenarios happen way more than you think. The amount of times where I've had a model that's not behaving as I thought it would. And it may be to do with, I chose the wrong probability distribution. I had the wrong number of samples or my decision tree had the wrong hyperparameter, which meant it couldn't pick up a certain feature that was very sparse. These things happen way more than you think, like I said. So if you don't invest in the maths, you'll be unable to develop these skills. And unfortunately, these skills is kind of what will hold you back in your career and prevent you from getting to the higher levels. A good analogy is that think of maths as the operating system of your brain for data science and machine learning. Every model, every algorithm, every insight you develop runs on this operating system. If your operating system is buggy or outdated or just not very good, then things are not gonna run smoothly and that will really slow you down in the long term. So lay the foundations now whilst you're studying and really develop really good skills in maths. I promise you, it'll pay so much dividends in the long run. I often get asked, what is the best course? Now, I love you all, but this question just needs to be put in the bin. The best course is the one that you start and finish. That's it, end of. Any introductory course in Python, data science, machine learning, whatever it may be, is going to be sufficient because all the beginner courses teach the exact same material. Now, Sure, there may be a learning method or learning style or even teacher that's better for you. But to be honest, you're really trying to optimize like 1% of the problem. The problem is picking a course and doing it. Stop worrying about trying to find the best one because it does not exist. You'll waste so much time doing that when you can invest our time in actually learning and making progress. As the famous saying goes, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago and the second best time is today. However, if you do want an online course platform recommendation, then I suggest Zero to Mastery, who are kindly sponsoring this video. They have helped so many people break into big tech and also other top tier companies. And they have such a wide variety of courses available that there'll definitely be something for you to help you on your data science journey. Some of my personal recommendations are the complete AI, machine learning, and data science course, Zero to Mastery, the complete SQL plus database bootcamp, and the PyTorch for deep learning bootcamp, Zero to Mastery. All these courses will help you no matter where you are, 
and there's even a sprinkle of deep learning in there. But if you're not sure exactly where to start, you can take their career path quiz, which will give you a personalized roadmap to achieve your goals. However, my favorite part is their community of over 500,000 members. This includes instructors whom you can learn from and also keep you accountable whilst you work towards your data science goals. There's a channel in this Discord group for literally everything, resume advice, job hunting, and even a channel where you can find study buddies to keep you accountable on your learning journey. I have literally never seen anything like this. Now I'll leave all of this linked in the description below for you to check out. Now, along that theme of trying to find the so-called best course, Another common problem I see with beginner data scientists is that they get stuck in tutorial hell. And trust me, you do not want to be there. If you're unaware of what tutorial hell is, this blog defines it as tutorial hell is where you write code that others are explaining to you how to write, but you don't understand how to write it yourself when given a blank slate. At some point, it's time to take the training wheels off and build something on your own. So in a nutshell, you're basically just taking tutorial course, tutorial course, one after the other, but you're never really like branching out and trying to learn yourself and really apply the information to something you haven't seen before. And that's kind of where you'd really learn. You don't learn just from doing tutorials nonstop because in a job, there's no tutorial for a job. You have to solve problems on the fly, which haven't been solved before, but you can't do that if you don't practice that and you're stuck in tutorial hell. You see what I mean? It's not a place you want to be in. Like, imagine you've only ever built an XG Boost model following a tutorial. Now, let's say you interview for a job, and in that job, they give you a case study to solve, you know, a churn prediction model, and you decide to use XG Boost. You're really gonna struggle because you've never applied any of these algorithms or models independently on a problem. And so when it comes to this interview, you're not gonna do as well as you could. So this is why tutorial hell is a really bad place to be. And not to mention, you learn more from actually doing as opposed to just taking courses. Courses are useful to solidify the basic information, maybe brush up on existing skills, but they're like the entry point. And ideally you wanna learn just enough and then start implementing. So there is a pros and cons to both of them. It's just understanding exactly where you are and choosing the right kind of action for your part of the journey and that does take some skill but you kind of know when you've learned enough to start implementing or when you don't know anything and you start learning so up to you kind of under like realize or like rationalize with yourself see where you are and apply the correct kind of action at your position so following on from my previous point if you're at a stage now where you're implementing models and building things kind of independently that's great but a problem I had right at the beginning is that I was doing this work, like building projects, but all the projects I was building was just a bit boring and a bit easy. Like all my projects were using .fit, .predict, and they're all from some easy Kaggle dataset. And that's great if you're building that complexity slowly. But let's say you've done five or 10 of these like easy projects. Now it's time to build something of more quality, something that's bigger, something that will take you one to two months to build that's something that will actually get you hired now i'm not slating these mini projects but you really want to branch out eventually and push yourself again right it's like you do the courses after you've done the courses you do different projects after you've done some projects you then build something of real value and scale it's like a progress right or like a, a timeline almost and again you gotta understand where you are in the journey and what is the next step that you need to take in order to maximize your chances of landing a job. If you want some ideas of some projects you can build which are of sufficient like quality and scale, here are some ideas I have. Build ML algorithms completely from scratch using Python. Re-implement a research paper and try to replicate the results. Build a basic recommendation system for anything in your life or fine tune an LLM. This list is by no means exhaustive. And like I said in my previous video, which you can see on screen here, I always advocate for building a project that is personal to you because that is the best way to go and that is exactly what will get you hired so start working on projects it's like the best thing you can do at probably most stages of your journey i am going to be honest with you i am an ai hater 
no, I do not think AI is going to replace data scientists. No, I don't think AI is going to replace machine learning engineers. And I am sure as hell not worried of AI whatsoever in the next five years at least. The reasons I'm not worried at all could be a whole video. And so I'll save that for a later date if that's something you're interested in hearing me talk about. But it's actually quite funny almost how little I'm so concerned about it. Anyway, the reason I am mentioning this is that a real common thing I see nowadays with beginner data scientists is that they jump straight into deep learning, large language models and, you know, AI, which I don't understand why you do that. This is literally a prime example of shiny object syndrome. Like I said right at the beginning of the video, as a beginner, you have to focus on the underlying fundamentals like maths, statistics, the basic algorithms of linear regression, logistic regression, support vector machines, decision trees. Like all the fundamentals is where you should prioritize your learning right at the beginning of your journey. These models, frameworks and skills are evergreen. They've been in the industry for literally decades. And to be honest, from my personal experience, the majority of algorithms are not LLMs, right? They're these like fundamental, almost basic, you could argue models, but they get the most value for businesses for that reason of being easy, simple, and the real skill comes in understanding the business problem, implementing it, having the right features. That is where you drive value as a data scientist or machine learning engineer, not by implementing an LLM to solve something for no particular reason. AI is still very much an unknown entity. And to be honest, in my opinion, it's very risky to put all your eggs in that basket, particularly for technology that hasn't really been around for that long at its current state. Take blockchain, for example. Yeah, blockchain is a good technology, but you don't hear about it anymore. And all those people who are in blockchain don't know what they're doing now, but I haven't heard a word. And AI, I'm not saying yes or no to this, but it seems to me going in a similar direction. And I think it's just way too early to really put all your kind of career prospects on one field. It's just too risky. And to be honest, somewhat stupid in my opinion. A good way of thinking about this and it's how I kind of think about all the latest technologies, if I have FOMO, is that if something right now is very, very popular, if it is indeed valuable and worth learning, then when I get to it a year later, two years later, it still should be valuable, right? So don't worry about not learning the cutting edge right now, because if it indeed is useful, it'll still be useful a year, two years, three years. In fact, the things that remain useful for the longest are the things you should learn. Hence why I recommend learning maths, statistics as the beginning part of your journey because they have been around for the most time so they're clearly the most valuable and they're still used. Do you see what I mean? So just stick with the fundamentals as a beginner and eventually you'll learn the cutting edge things if they're still cutting edge when you get to that point and if they're still even useful. And to be honest, most things are just not that useful when they're popular. So like I said, the main thing with this video, learn the fundamentals, build projects, and you're literally doing better than the majority of other data science beginners. But remember earlier in the video where I said some projects are better for getting you hired? Well, those projects are the ones that are more in depth, longer, and are just more personal to you. But how do you go about actually finding those projects? Well, I recommend you check out this video where I walk through that exact process. I'll see you there.